welcome everybody. It's time once again to grab your board. Maybe it's a snowboard this time of year and ride that sales pipeline with our gold medal winner, Matt Hines. Oh my gosh, you, you are the best at the <laughs> intros, Paul. Um, welcome to a Winter Olympics edition of Sales Pipeline That's Radio. Right. Isn't it amazing how, like, you know, every four years we go, we go four years now watching this, and then every four years we become experts in South House. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm, an I'm an expert in the luge. Her curling, curling? Was, yeah, curling. curling. Curling is what really I get really, really into it. And oh it's only God. every four years. <laughs> yeah. You know what, Paul? As much as I wanted to talk about sort of customer loyalty and advocacy, we do have a Canadian as our guest oh, today. Oh, that so makes when, sense. And up here in Seattle, you know, we get, um, I think, is it CBC? It's one of the Canadian. It's like the Canadian version of NBC, right? Right. And yeah. so it's, uh, we, but with much, much, honestly, better coverage. I mean, like it's, they cover, like they're more in neutral in terms of who they cover it's better. I think just it's less fluffy. It's good. It's just good coverage. That said, a great coverage still. I mean, we're gonna have to agree disagree on the curling. I I try to watch curling. I got a buddy. <laughs> he's in he's in the he's in the Seattle Curling Club. I mean, we went years ago. We went to the Seattle Curling Club. They had an open house, and we went not to make fun of it, but just be like, what the hell is this? And it was like they gave you a broom and they they kind of walked you through the game. And there were four of us, and we all had a really good time. And then two of the four joined, and one is now Skip of his own crew. And then you know my uh, my buddy, he's he's still in a, in a crew as well, and they they love it. But um, that's a decent conversion rate there, Matt. Fifty percent. Well, and and I mean they didn't. There was no booze. There wasn't an open bar, so I don't know what it cost them. Just whatever whatever it cost to keep the ice frozen, I guess. Yeah, and they got yeah. two people. And then it's not just conversion, it's, as we'll discuss today, like they got converted that day, but that was years ago. The lifetime yeah. value, the loyalty and advocacy built on curling in this tiny little, uh, tiny little, little, little outskirt uh, outpost. It's not exactly a curling town, but anyway, we're going to get to customer success and advocacy. We've got a lot to talk about today. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. Once we get past uh, waves and, and, and the Minnesota Vikings and, uh, and in the, in the Olympics, we eventually do talk about uh, B2B sales and marketing. Uh, we are here every week at 1130 Pacific, uh, 230 Eastern. We are live on the Lead uh, Funnel Media Radio Network, and we are featuring every week experts in B2B sales and marketing. Today is no different. We have Jocelyn Brown. She is the VP of Customer Success at Allocadia. She is uh, from Canada. So we may uh, still use some some ice, some some cold, some Olympics references, but really, really excited to have her join us today uh, to talk a lot more about customer success and customer advocacy. Uh, Jocelyn, thanks again for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure, Matt. So, if you've listened to this show, you know in the past, you know that we we are as guilty as a lot of B two B marketers, and that we spend the majority of our time talking about acquisition. We spend the majority of our time talking about getting customers on board, and. When you look at the budgets and the resources from a lot of B2B marketing groups, I think that's reflected there as well. You've got all these people and budgets and marketing technology devoted to acquisition. And then when it comes to uh, sort of keeping customers, oftentimes it's, you know, it's a toll-free number and an occasional newsletter. Um, and I don't know if you saw you just, just this morning, a friend of both of ours, Paul Tashima, who's the CEO of Nudge, he put something up on LinkedIn talking about, you know, customer success then and now that, you know, previously it might have been more reactive. It was more support and service. Now it's really a revenue driver for the business to drive advocacy and, you know, ambassadors of the brand expansion. So what maybe used to be kind of a you know, maybe an afterthought, maybe something that was thought of as more reactive, administrative and tactical is now very much uh, a strategic part of the business. Uh, so we'd love to have you kind of talk about your perspective there and then what you guys are doing uh, with that at Allocadia as well. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. So um, I think probably the advent of subscription economy really of SaaS is what has put just such a spotlight on retention, on investment in your customers. And uh, that business model really has given a seat at the table to those folks that actually work with the customers day in, day out, because we sort of have to earn their business every day. Uh, their barrier to leave is very low. And we need to make sure that they are constantly uh, feeling uh, like they're getting value and feeling valued in that sort of business relationship. And so, and that, I've been doing it for 10 plus years, uh, probably longer than that if I were to really admit it. And, uh, and, and really for me, being with the customer is where it's at. It is really the center of the, the company from results, from revenue, from, from sort of anything. Um, I actually work with customers uh, post-sale, but I also own a fairly large number in that I am responsible for all the renewal revenue and also all of our expansion revenue, which accounts for a very significant part of our growth. So 
to say it's just kind of an afterthought or a piece is a, a gross kind of misunderstanding of the economics of a SaaS business. Uh, no so question. certainly at Alacadia, uh, the, the customer is the center really of everything. And, uh, you know, we build our product for that. We organize our journey for that. Um, our customers really lead our marketing. Uh, they are our best kind of voice in the market. Uh, peer-to-peer references are kind of the most valuable to our prospects. So putting the time and effort and attention into our customers to make sure that they're receiving value means that they're going to talk about it. They're going to explain it in the market. They're going to continue to work with us and advocate for our business. So uh, I think those that haven't figured that out yet um, are behind. Yeah, I I wholeheartedly agree. And And let's talk about how that relates to what we do talk a lot about here, even on the acquisition side, which is the buying journey. Uh, and I think yeah. oftentimes we think of the buying journey too often as ending when someone buys. Like that may be the middle, that may be the end of the sales process, but it's really the middle of what I'd call the revenue bow tie. You know, the, you may yep. have gotten someone to buy, but that's when things really begin. As someone who's who spent a fair, quite a bit of time, and I want to get back and talk about the Aliqua days as well. Sure. Like how, how do you, as a customer uh, sort of success professional, think about the buying journey? It's way beyond the closed deal, right? Absolutely. Uh, I think also just in the, the nature of how people buy now, um, because it's a lot easier to try things, because it's a lot easier to sort of start small and grow from there, uh, you also are seeing that people are really trying and then expanding. So that land and expand strategy uh, that we were successful with at Aliqua and is a very big piece of our strategy at Alicadia is let's get people in experiencing our product, experiencing our team, uh, you know, solving their problem, maybe at a smaller scale, and then help them kind of map out how to get to a fully executed strategy and a fully executed. And that there's, there's really no uh, downside to us bringing in a customer at a sort of smaller scale because we know, first of all, that our technology is going to help them. Uh, We know that our team understands what's going on, has done it many, many times before and is going to provide them the right kind of guidance. And we know if we let them kind of set the terms of how they grow, that it's going to be the right solution and the right fit. We're not going to kind of have to back into it based on a sales cycle that maybe not everybody knew enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, to run really, really well. So for us, there's no um, there's no fear of people coming in and sort of trying it out a bit first, because you know history tells us that that is a, a great place for us to start and and to grow. And we've had uh, great success there. And then it makes the whole process a little less friction in the process for the customer, and a, a lot easier. They don't have to you know fix everything all at once. We don't have to do a big bang release. We can really kind of move them along. And that's a little change in the buying process. That's a little change in technology where integrations and things like that are easier. Um, But that's also just our philosophy. Uh, We want you to get a feel for our technology, to feel some relief of us being able to help you solve that that problem and and for you to then experience our team. Uh, Because our team really is so invested in making sure that you are successful, that you're going to you're going to partner with us. It's going to feel like a real partnership. Talking today on Sales Pipeline Radio with Jocelyn Brown. She's the Vice President of Customer Success at Alicadia. Uh, I mean, this is a company that clearly, you know, is 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 bought in on doing uh, customer success right. I think by 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 having your position there, by having the resources and the focus there, I think it, it is a part of the culture. It is a part of the priorities. And I think, you know, that was clear to me as well. And I think I met you for the first time back when you were at Eloqua, which is eventually bought by Oracle. And, you know, the Eloqua Experience conferences, there aren't very many conferences I go to where you see more hugs than handshakes, you know, when you see, you know, people that do- hadn't even met each other before, but because of the relationship they built, because of the bond that existed between customers and not just the company, but the people at the company, um, that is an incredible competitive advantage. Talk about how customer success and customer uh, advocacy was really at the heart of the culture of Eloqua and how that's really sort of developed the programs you've built from that point forward. Yeah, I mean, there's no question that I... Part of my goal is to recreate uh, some of what was so great at Eloqua. And I've been very fortunate in that there are a lot of people here that are willing to come along that ride with me. There is so There are so many good examples of what we did there, but I think the primary one was uh, that everybody believed that the customer was at the center of what we were doing. There was sort of a concept that the customer was in the room all the time. 
all of our meeting rooms were named after customers. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone in the company had some portion of their compensation tied to a customer success type of metric. It really was pervasive. We talked about our customers. Our marketer, our uh, marketing was led by the voice of our customers. We told stories all the time. So they just, they were always there. They were ever present. And I think that just meant that we were always thinking about them. And uh, we were very invested in not just the companies we were helping, but the individual people and the mm -hmm. relationships that were driving that. Well, and the I think another part of the customer evangelism and customer experience program at Eloqua that I I was certainly a part of as well as a as a Eloqua customer and partner was Topliners. I mean, you guys, yep. the, your your customer success staff extended into your customers. You had customers that were essentially you know ambassadors and you know support staff in many cases for each other. Yep. Uh, and I think talk a little bit about where Topliners came from and sort of why that was such a key part of the success for you. Yeah, I, it, uh, the investment or the choice to really put that kind of investment in there came out of a project called ICE. It was the ideal customer experience uh, where, uh, you know, people from sort of all of the post sales functions uh, got together and tried to figure out where are all the ways that we can make this experience even better for our customers, where we can make it easy to do business with us, where we can, you know, celebrate success, where we can share stories, where we can help people grow together. And it was just clear that we needed to get uh, as much of our expertise, not just from the staff, but from the customers that had grown up with us through that sort of transformation in marketing into marketing automation out there as we could. And, and really, it was also an extension of, of we'd very successfully been running uh, small customer events uh, throughout uh, our, our, um, our region, mostly in the U.S., but even in Europe where we'd get customers together and we almost didn't have to present anything. They wanted to talk to each other. And we just saw this amazing networking effect um, and this incredible desire for everybody to help everybody else. Uh, so we, we really felt like we were building something. Uh, it was a pretty transformative time in the B2B marketing space. And everybody was on that same mission and everybody wanted to help everybody else. So Top Learners really was our best way to kind of amplify that. And, um, and as you know, it really did exactly that where our customers became our best educators, our best marketers, and really the best source for expertise. Yeah, and I mean, top liners just uh, we probably just said this would be. It was basically a discussion board. It was it was a discussion board with with comment threads where you could attach, you know, documents. And um, I mean, like a lot of companies have those, but I think hopefully what you've heard from Jocelyn so far is there was something very special about the culture. There was something about the priorities of the organization, the people that were leading it, the people that founded it, and you know that 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 really drove what happened with customers. And I think, you know, you can set up meshes boards, you can start newsletters, but unless you have that culture, uh, it's not going to go where you want it to go. We're going to have to take a quick break here, pay some bills. We'll be back uh, in just a couple minutes with more with Jocelyn Brown, Vice President of Customer Success at Alcadia, talking a lot more about advocacy, uh, a little more about the old Eloqua days and what she sees moving forward in terms of driving more revenue responsible customer programs. So you've been listening to Sales Pipeline Radio. <music> In a world where the speed of innovation and change in B2B marketing has never been greater, the only thing bigger is the need for clarity, for a blueprint, for a guide to what's really working. And how about a way to apply it specifically today to increase sales pipeline growth, velocity, and most of all, conversion? That's what you'll find in the Modern Marketer's Field Guide. And amazingly, you can download it for free. HeinzMarketing.com, just like it sounds, H-E-I-N-Z-M-A-R-K-E-T-I-N-G. It encompasses the entire sales and marketing cycle, but in quick bursts with lots of specific, actionable ideas, strategies, tactics you can put to work right away, like today. The loaded table of contents helps you narrow in and tackle a problem, and it's something you can come back to over and over again as a reference guide. Why not download your free copy of the Modern Marketer's Field Guide? It's free. HeinzMarketing.com, just like it sounds. H-E-I-N-Z, marketing.com. All right, back to our program with Matt Hines, the only man I know who can say the word luge without sounding silly. 
<laughs> love watching that. You know, I love Luge or Skeleton. I can't decide which one I like better. <laughs> and I was actually telling my wife last night, I think I might like, if I were to do it, I think I might like Skeleton. Even though it seems crazier, at least you can stare at what you're doing. <laughs> if you have to look over your toes to try to figure out where you're going, that seems harder. That does. I just I don't know, and and I have to apologize to Jocelyn because I don't I don't mean to make uh, make fun of curling. It actually, you know, if if anything, like there's no way at this point in my life I'm going to race down a mountain of ice at 70 miles an hour on skis. But curling is the I mean, given I've achievable not done it, goals, Matt. I could, could totally do curling. Yeah, I mean, I, I could. I could four years from now, I could be. Where is it going to be? Uh, Beijing, Paris. I don't. I could totally do curling. Yeah, and uh, as for luge. The team event this morning, the Canadians uh, won a medal. So I, really? uh, oh yeah, it was very exciting. I have no the Canadians, obviously not surprisingly very good at winter winter sports. You know the uh, I've really enjoyed watching the Canadian figure skaters the last few days. Like my yeah. daughter is just she likes what we are my four year old. Uh, women, he calls them Gerdas. I don't know why, but so he's enjoy. He likes watching the ice skating Gerdas. And um, but last night was the first night I got to see uh, snowboard cross, where basically oh, they oh, line cool. up six snowboarders and they yep. just race down an obstacle course and crash into each other. It's like NASCAR on ice. It's really yep. fun. All right. Back to Sales Pipeline Radio. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. If you're still with us after that nonsense, um, if you like what you're hearing today, uh, make sure you join us every week. Coming up in the next couple of weeks, next week on Sales Pipeline Radio, we have Joe Highland. He's the CMO of On24. We're going to talk about uh, secrets of CMOs, the secret successes behind small B2Bs to revenue leaders. Uh, Joe has started a podcast called Confessions of a CMO. And we talk a little bit about that. And the week after our first episode in uh, in March, I'm super excited. We have Jill Conrad. She is one of my favorite people in the B2B sales world. She's written a number of books, including Snap Selling, uh, and just hugely, hugely influential to me and to others in B2B sales. So excited to have her join the program as well. Today, we still have some a little more time with Jocelyn Brown. She's the VP of Customer Success at Alacadia. A couple of things I will promote for you here, Jocelyn, on, the, on February 28th. I uh, highly encourage you to check out a workshop that Allocadia is doing online called the Metrics That Matter Workshop. They're doing that in conjunction with IDC. You can go to Allocadia.com, learn more about that. Uh, you can also go to bit.ly uh, slash Allocadia underscore Metrics That Matter. Uh, and, you know, just, uh, you know, in terms of putting their money where their mouth is, I would also encourage you to go check out uh, just content.allocadia.com. That's at a dot com. Uh, tons of great resources, uh, downloads, blog posts, uh, some frameworks, some really, really great stuff. And, you know, I know, you know, Jocelyn, it's, you know, is from your journey from Eloqua to Oracle to where you are today, um, you know, having that sort of culture and focus on customer success is great. But I think, you know, continuing to provide ideas and insights to your customers, uh, oftentimes, and I think we've seen this data from Gartner and CEB and others, it's not just providing a phone number to call. It's not adding more features. It's really helping your customers become smarter, giving them new ideas and insights. That is a huge competitive differentiator. So the content that you know we're seeing on online and then what you're providing to customers is a huge part of your job as well. Absolutely. And I think you know to bring it to sort of uh, brass tacks, as much as we talked about a lot of sort of softer stuff in the culture of Eloqua that really dr drove such an amazing community for us. I mean, that resulted in, in real impact and real results, and that came with investment. It doesn't happen by accident, and there is a real outcome to that. So customer success uh, should not be mistaken for at a colleague that sort of called it dialing for smiles. It's absolutely not that. When you understand a customer's business, when you have a great relationship and great empathy for what they're trying to accomplish and you're really trying to help them solve that problem, you will make that company successful and they will grow and buy more and you will make that individual successful and they will remember that and they will take you everywhere they go. And that amplifying effect of advocacy comes from the real work of listening, understanding and providing solutions uh, for your customers. Uh, that includes your software, but also in advice and guidance in connections in helping them talk to peers that are struggling with the same thing. So um, I wouldn't want anybody to, to mistake customer success just for service or something soft. It, it has a true uh, and very real business benefit. Absolutely. Yeah, I think a lot of people listening probably are in that that camp we talked about at the beginning of the uh, of the episode around yeah. just not really having people, not having resources. And so if I'm if I'm a VP of marketing, if I'm a CMO listening to this saying, yeah, this makes sense, we need to be doing this, but I don't have a Jocelyn on my team yet. I don't have a you know, we don't have this in my budget. What are some things people can do to sort of build the foundation for a, a, a more impactful customer success uh, effort? 
Yeah, absolutely. The, the good news is it, it's probably uh, an extension of some of the stuff you already do. That idea of journey mapping that gets talked about a lot in the B2B marketing, it's extending that all the way through the customer lifecycle and understanding uh, the touch points, the content, the tools, the other types of things, the triggers, all the way through that, they're going to help the customer, that are going to provide opportunity for your company, and sort of seeing where your gaps are and where you're, where you might be able to get the kind of biggest bang for your buck in terms of closing that gap. Um, understanding the journey that your customer is going through uh, in using your tool is just as important as understanding the journey that they go through in, you know, researching, understanding, and making a buying decision. Um, but a lot of the same uh, tools apply. A lot of the same theory applies. A lot of the same work can be done. For me, it's always going to involve a team. I think that, in certainly in B two B, there nothing really can replace that relationship and that empathy and somebody really feeling like you care what happens. Uh, to them in in the context of how you're working with them. I had the, um, the good fortune of a, a customer who I've, I realized I've worked with for 11 years come visit us in our headquarters. And, and just before she got up to tell her story, she sort of turned to me and said, uh, you know, having a company really care about you matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, it matters a lot. And and she's a buyer. You know, she she's the person making that decision and that matters to her. So I think sometimes people uh, forget the human equation um, that there's real work in building relationships and that those relationships carry an inherent value for the customer and for uh, the co- the company that's sort of working with them. Now, there's no doubt about that. I mean, I think there's I think uh, there aren't enough people that I think prioritize that. I think too often yeah. we look at the spreadsheet and we manage through, you know, through the numbers we want to hit. Uh, we look at customers as buildings, but buildings don't actually sign checks. The people inside the buildings do. And there's something about having a good relationship with someone and showing and proving that you care that not only generates loyalty, but gives gives you a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. You know, you've yeah. got, you know, things are going to break. You know, things are going to not work the way they want you want them to. Um, so, you know, and I think in the right environments, you know, in, well, in, in, in most environments, you get pro- customers that are angry and that yell and scream and get upset. In an environment where you actually make this part of the culture, where you make you make a care, they call and wonder what they can do to help you. They're rooting Absolutely. for you to, get, to, to 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 do it well. So, um, you know, before we have to wrap up here in a couple minutes, you know, you you've been doing this for a while. I think there's a lot of people that I know that you know you've worked with that you, we've talked about in the past that you've learned from. Who for people that want to learn more about how to do this right, who are some of the people that have been influential for you? Uh, they can be dead or alive, uh, but people in in terms of you know customer care customer advocacy uh, that you'd recommend people go and read? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I mean, I take just an incredible amount of learning from my days at Eloqua and I continue to work with those people and talk to them. So you mentioned Paul Tashima. He certainly uh, writes on customer success and the power of relationships. Uh, Heather Fay, who's at Lookbook, is probably one of the most talented advocacy uh, leaders that, that I've really ever met. Uh, I spend, I'm, I'm a Gainsight customer, so I spend a lot of time um, reading their content and have uh, had a chance to meet Allison Pickens. I think uh, she writes some really great stuff uh, and some really practical stuff maybe about the operational and organizational things that, that maybe people are kind of craving. You've got uh, just, you've actually got a plethora of people talking about it right now. What I would suggest is find the meetup in your local city and go and talk to a bunch of people. Um, it's really in that networking effect and in that community that I get my best ideas and I get my greatest value. Um, Because as we are kind of building up this kind of a profession, uh, you don't know who's going to have your next best idea. And I think people are bringing experience from lots of other functions that is just accelerating the growth of customer success and just making us better. So find your friends. And and me, I, I love to hear from people. I'm very happy um, to, to talk to them. So you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, my Twitter handle is Joss Brown, J O C E Brown. Uh, I'm happy to interact on this stuff cause that's, what's fun for me. Yeah. I appreciate, appreciate you doing that. And I think, you know, you're, 
your approach here and your answers just to, just to reinforce everything I know about you, just being a very yeah. genuine, very customer-centric person and very uh, very open to sharing ideas and, and your experience with others. So appreciate that very much. And I just, I would echo the, you know, go and, you know, find friends, meet friends, stay connected with friends that also have similar roles, not necessarily in your industry, not necessarily with your same type of customer. I think sometimes if you get into other industries, Absolutely. other customer situations, you might discover something that that you hadn't thought about in your four walls that someone else is doing because of because of what feels natural to them that might be truly innovative and new in your industry that gives you another edge. So uh, definitely, uh, you know, important to continue to be lifelong, lifelong learners. Well, speaking, Paula, lifelong learners, we're going to have to wrap things up here on another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. If you like what you hear today and if you want to share this episode with other people on your team, you can do so a number of different ways. You can go in a couple of days to salespipelineradio.com. We will have this entire episode on demand. And you can share that with uh, your fear, your friends, peers, and colleagues, all episodes, past, present, and future of Sales Pipeline Radio up on salespipelineradio.com. Make sure you don't miss another episode. Subscribe uh, to the series up on iTunes Store, Google Play, and we'll have a highlight of this session on uh, HeinzMarketing.com in just a few days as well with links to uh, the Allocadia content page, with links to the upcoming workshop, and then we'll put a link to uh, Jocelyn's Twitter account as well. So thank you very much, Jocelyn, for joining us today. We've got a great couple of weeks of episodes coming up as usual. Thank you very much for joining us on behalf of my great producer, Paul. This is Matt Hines. See you next week on Sales Pipeline Radio. Once again, you've been riding the Sales Pipeline with Matt Hines of Hines Marketing right here in the Funnel Radio Network for at-work listeners like you.